Uh, it's a Thursday, which you know means uh, we don't have much time. It never feels like we have much time, but uh, even more so on days like today. So let's get started. Hopefully you're most the way to getting this. Don't worry, it'll stay on screen for a little bit, um, but not forever. Um, and there will be other notes to write down as well. I wonder if you can think back to our last lesson. We were having a look at measures of central tendency. Remember those guys, right? There were three of them and we've covered two so far, right? We covered mode. It was just like highest probability on your distribution. And we covered, what was the second one? Mode and median, mode and median right. Um, remind me to come back to that at the end of this. We'll, we have a few more things to say about that, but me median's done. Um, now we're talking about mean, right? That's, that's the third and final measure of central tendency that we're interested in. Now, as with all things, these measures of central tendency are so much easier when you just have like a bunch of scores, right? It's like, here's the people who scored five, here's the ones who scored 10, etc. You just, well, let's think about how you calculate a mean when you have this kind of information, right? Number one, you just take all of the scores that are in your data set and then you multiply them by something. What do you multiply by? The mean, the We're trying to find the mean, right? I multiply by the, the number of times that that thing happens. We have a name for that. It starts with an F, the frequency. Thank you. So we take these guys, right, the scores, and we multiply by the frequency, right? So you can read that chart yourself. You can see where the heights go up to, but just for convenience, I've put the numbers there. So we take each score, multiply by frequency, but then we have to do one more thing to actually get the mean. We've multiplied, so now we... Divide, right? So we divide by, where did this number come from? Seven. Where did I get it from? There's seven scores. It's how many scores I have in my distribution. So one plus three plus two plus one gives me that seven. And then off you go. I mean, you can go ahead and verify that I didn't get this wrong in my calculator, but you get a value out of that, right? And you have a look at um, the scores that you got. Does 12.14 this look about right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, most of the scores, I mean, 10 is the mode. Um, and you've got more down this end than you have down that end. So that's why you, you sort of, your mean gets dragged up. Making sense so far? Okay, good. So this is with a frequency distribution. I wonder if you can think back to um, bivariate data. No, sorry, I take it back. Um, we actually looked at this under descriptive statistics. Uh, when we take a frequency distribution and kind of like translate it into a probability distribution. I want you to think about your graph and how it would look different, there's not much of a change, if you were to take that same data and make it a probability distribution. Have a think about it for a second. You won't have frequency anymore, will you? Because you're like, I don't know how many there are, all I know is the probability of each one, right? So instead of having one, two, three going up on your vertical axis, um, you're not gonna have that quantity, you're instead going to have, well, I want a probability distribution so you can have probabilities. Does that make sense? Okay, why are they all out of seven? Because that's how many there were before, but it's worth pointing out, like, could have been 70 or, or 700, and I would just have more in each group. So this is just our relative frequency. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent. So let's think about how we get the equivalent, the mean, out of this, right? The equivalent measure of central tendency. Um, I can do the same thing and start with the scores, right? But I then hit a snag because I can't multiply by frequency anymore, can I? Because I don't know what the frequency is, right? So what do I multiply by instead? Well, the equivalent thing, right, is the probability. That's what the vertical axis tells you now, right? So if I were to take these scores here, sorry, these probabilities here, I then just multiply each one sort of like I did before. Now, I tried to color code this to make it a little clearer to you, but I hope without even getting a calculator out, you can anticipate this is going to give you exactly the same answer that we got before. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right now, just to make it really painfully obvious for you, right? And I'd love you to have this written down because we're going to refer to it in a second. Just have a look at the two calculations side by side. This is us working out the mean on a frequency distribution. Yes? This is us working out on a probability distribution. But, but like, look, right? They are the same thing. Like, you can see the whole thing's been divided by seven, which is the same as dividing each one by seven individually, which is your probabilities. Make sense? Yeah. Now, despite the fact that we get the same value for each one, right? Because this guy's on a probability distribution, we give it an ever so slightly different name. I wonder if anyone remembers what it's called. It's not called the mean anymore. It's about, yeah, it's about, well, if this is your distribution, right, like what value would you anticipate that you get if you did this experiment over and over again, oh. right? What value would you anticipate? Oh. We call it, starts with an E, 
Oh, I think bad. Expected, it's expected value, right? And we denote it with an E for expected, right? So you're very close. Okay, so this is what it looks like in a concrete situation, but of course we're always interested in like generalizing out, like what does this look like for any set of data, right? So I want you to have a look again at the two things that get um, added up over and over and over again, right? Um, what are these black numbers again? Black numbers here? They're the, they're the scores that you could score in this, in this test or, or whatever, right? And then the colored things are the probabilities, right? So score, probability, score, probability. And then you just take all those and you add them up. Remember this notation, right? Add up the products of your scores and probabilities, okay? Scores and probabilities. Now, all of this, as we've seen before, this is in a situation where um, you have specific scores. Like you can get five, you can't get you know, in between five and 10, right? So we would say that this is for a discrete distribution, right? A discrete random variable, but that's not the territory we've been in over the last couple of weeks, right? We've been looking at not discrete, okay. we've been looking at continuous random variables, right? So I want you to think about how would you translate this idea, taking a sum of different things, which is discrete, into a continuous context? What would that look like? What do we do instead of adding up individual chunks? We, we add up all these little bits. We have a name for this, right? Adding up all these little bits and putting them all together. We call it, we spent a whole topic on it, guys. Starts with an I. Integration. We call it integration, right? So that big sigma notation is going to turn into an integral in a continuous random variable. And this stuff on the right-hand side, well, it's going to look like that score times the probability density function. Does this make sense, yes. right? For that probability, we're not going to have like this one and that one. We're going to have this changing value over time. But I hope that you can see, even though this looks a lot more like involved, it's really the same thing, right? It's just that in a continuous context, you've got to deal with integrals, not with just sums of nice, neat chunks.